Releasing a movie about a civil war in America during one of the most contentious presidential elections in U.S. history. Dang, A24, I too like to live dangerously. Hi, my name is Ryan Lane, and welcome to my review channel. So for today's movie, I will be reviewing Civil War, directed by Alex Garland and starring Kirsten Dunst, Kaylee Spaney, Wagner Mora, Stefan Henderson, Nick Offerman, and Jesse Plemons. So sometime in the near future, America's embroiled in a, you guessed it, Civil War. Leading over this severely divided house in which there are western forces of California and Texas, yep, only in the movies can those two states come together with common ground, and the Florida Alliance are all heading towards the White House in uh, what appears to have been a very long, ongoing, and exceptionally destructive civil war. Uh, leading over this severely divided house is the president, they never give him a name, uh, played by Nick Offerman, a dictatorial leader struggling to live with the consequences of his own actions. Documenting the atrocities are, and violence are photojournalists Lee Smith and Joel, played by Kirsten Dunst and Wagner Mora, respectively. Uh, also include... Tagging along with them are new, is newbie J Jesse, played by Kaylee Spaney, and veteran uh, Sammy, played by Stefan Henderson. They're on a mission to travel nearly 600 miles across battle zones just for the chance to interview the president before he goes the way of Mussolini, i.e. dead. So the writing is a masterclass, like really so, because like in many in movies with somehow even more expensive budgets, the the film would basically just convey all this information to you in just gigantoid exposition dumps. Not with Civil War. Civil War uses you know very carefully chosen dialogue exchanges along with with visual storytelling to convey all the details you could possibly think to ask about what would happen if America was embroiled in civil war, ranging from what would happen to the value of the US dollar, to fuel shortages, to just, I mean, how the infrastructure and how people would react in general. The, the screenplay also does an amazing job of creating three-dimensional roles for even the most bit of players like at one point there's a soldier under gunfire for and he has like i'd say barely a minute's worth of screen time maybe two and yet he may like he makes an incredibly depressing impression like is that's how good the writing is for this movie uh, the writing also comes with up with brilliantly tense scenarios. Even a visit to a gas station is like, come on, go, 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 go. Like, and the film does a good job of subverting your expectations as to how these exchanges will go. Like, as I mentioned earlier, the gas station, a little excursion, it doesn't go the way you expect it to. Like, at one point, a character starts following another. That sounds incredibly broad. Broad. Well, welcome to the channel. I tried to play it. Uh, close to the chest with spoilers. Anyway, there's these two characters and you think, oh no, but then, you know, thankfully it doesn't go that way. Well, the alternative ain't much better, but what you're immediately going to jump to will not happen. And I like how all the scenarios, they show, they range the gamut in terms of how people respond to a civil war, ranging from uh, denial to pragmatism to full-blown psychopathy. So the performances are effortlessly naturalistic and easily clue you in to each character's desires and personalities. Uh, Kirsten Dunst is impressive as a hardened war journalist struggling to, you know, just, well, struggling with the value of her work and whether or not she's actually making a difference with her photographs. Like at one point she's like, you know, I thought whenever I went out to places I was like, Hey, America, don't do this. And then America was like, lol, civil war, go burr. And also Wagner Mora, he's also impressive to watch as an adrenaline junkie hiding his emotional scars behind 
conversational skill and booze. Like, seriously, this dude can strike up a conversation with almost anyone. Like, even in a store where there's a lady just clearly disinterested in him, by the end of it, you know, they're having a conversation in the background. It's, again, I like the character. Kaylee Spaney, she's also compelling to watch as Jesse. A newbie photojournalist slowly getting high on her own supply of black and white film photographs. And Stephen Henderson, he uh, brings desperately needed levity as uh, Sammy, a uh, veteran photojournalist who is clearly getting too old for this shit. Like, seriously, the, the, the uh, younger characters do not let up with how old he is and how immobile he is to which he has a very uh creative yet very simple solution to that at one layer on in the film rounding and rounding out the impressive supporting cast are character are actors like nick offerman as a vulnerable yet power hungry president and jesse plemons as a sorrowful yet psychopathic soldier like seriously the scene with him alone is like one of the most tense scenes in the movie in a film that features a boatload of tense scenes. So at $50 million, this is to date A24's most expensive movie. The previous record holder was last year's Bo is Afraid at uh, $35 million. So A24 had quite a bit of faith in this project and at least scale wise i mean the writing's good but definitely scale wise a24's faith has been rewarded uh like alex garland he smartly uses his comparatively limited budget compared to similar films with triple digit million dollar budgets to he uses small scale settings to convey a larger picture about america's decay both in terms of civility and infrastructure and yet when when the film needs to go big in the climax and it does go big it is just as capable if not even more so than its much bigger budgeted counterparts some of the cgi can be a tad noticeable but that's only if you're only if you're looking like really hard and even then you'll be too awestruck by the depressingly bleak you know, tone and story to even care at that point. And the sound design definitely is really good. Everything that transitions from the quiet scenes to the loud scenes it does an effective job of jolting you out of your seat. Plus, I don't know, personally, I mean, the gunfire sound effects, no, I, I you never really focus on them, but I think that this film does a good job of using less generic stock sound effects, which is ironic because... I mean, many of films with bigger budgets use more generic sound effects. Again, like I said, this is probably the, one of the most economically shot $50 million action movies I've ever seen. The cinematography also does an amazing job of capturing the turmoil, both you know in the war violence and the emotional turmoil of each character uh soft focus in particular is used to great effect with the characters you know showing just how isolated they are from each other and plus the camera stills like at one point throughout all the action like uh the photo journalists lee smith and and jesse they'll be taking photos one with a digital camera one with an analog film stock camera and one is and they managed to lend an eerie, almost surreal feeling to the violence. And I, I thought the effect was really good. And the film definitely knew uh, how to use sound to gray effect as it knows when to cut out the sound and when not to. So again, well done all across the board. As impressive as it is bleak, Civil War commands an impressive cast and a director at his peak. So with all that in mind, I will be giving Civil War five out of five stars anyway thank you for watching have a good rest of your day if you like this review and would like to see more like it be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and for today's comment section prompt of the day what is your favorite alex garland movie and why